After several incidents with the first patient that caused the Neuralink chip to lose 85% of its signals, Musk officially confirmed that the company has completed the implant on the second patient with unexpected success. Many changes have been made for the second patient and the new generation of the implant device. Is it safe in the long term? And are there risks after the chip improvements? Find out now. Neuralink's Second Human Trials after the successful testing on the first patient, Nolan Arbaugh, it's been more than seven months now and we finally heard brand new news about the second patient. Elon Musk shared the results of the new chip implant in a recent eight-hour video. As we know, the second patient suffered a spinal cord injury and was paralyzed in an accident. It's not too difficult to see. The second patient also had a similar condition to Nolan Arbaugh. The guy was paralyzed after a driving accident, and Neuralink is thought to be giving him a second life. Like Nolan Arba, in the first few weeks after the successful implementation, Elon did not rush to reveal the patient's identity. Therefore, in a conversation with Lex Friedman, very little info about the patient was mentioned. Musk said, I don't want to jinx it, but it seems to have gone extremely well with a second implant. There's a lot of signal, a lot of electrodes is working very well. Clearly, there have been changes in the redesign of Neuralink's implant device after learning from some issues encountered with Nolan Arbaugh. The first-generation chip included 64 threads, each thinner than a human hair, with 16 electrodes per thread, totaling 1,024 electrodes. Incredible! However, the chip for the second patient seems to be even more effective. To increase bandwidth and avoid electrode degradation on the threads, Elon stated that the next-gen implant device will have 128 threads but each thread will only have eight electrodes. This change, he said, could potentially double the bandwidth if the thread positions are accurately identified. On top of that, the threads for the second patient will be implanted at a deeper level compared to Nolan Arba. The electrodes connecting to the cortex will be implanted 8 millimeters deep from the brain's surface instead of the previous depth of 3 to 5 millimeters. According to our info, implanting the threads deeper helps secure them more firmly, addressing those issues that we learned from the retraction of threads on the brain, which led to a loss of 85% of the threads and a reduction in signal detection. Additionally, deeper implantation means that even if the threads retract slightly, the electrodes are still going to be deep enough within the brain to remain functional and detect neuronal activity. Now, while it's not clear whether impacting the brain at a greater depth poses a bigger risk to the patient, it is evident that patient number two must endure more more significant damage compared to patient number one. For the second patient, Neuralink's team also learned that residual air pockets in the brain are a major cause of the threads on the chip retracting. Explaining this, Neuralink's head neurosurgeon, Matthew McDougall, said, During any typical brain surgery, a small amount of hair is introduced into the skull. That's because neurosurgeons like to have as much room as possible around the brain. That air pocket, we think, may have contributed to eating up some of the thread slack as the air bubble migrated to be under the implant, pushing the brain away from the implant, McDougall explained. In response, Neuralink's team wants to keep the second patient's carbon dioxide levels in a normal range during surgery to prevent the brain from expanding or attracting. The company plans on better sculpting the implant to prevent a gap from appearing under the skull. That will put the implant closer to the brain and eliminate some of the tensions on the threads, McDougall mentioned. Neuralink had planned to perform a brain chimp implant surgery on a second patient back in June, but the plan got canceled due to medical issues. The surgery then took place quietly and only became known when Elon revealed it in a recent interview. So, what did Elon Musk say about the results on that second patient? As mentioned above, although second generation chip got tweaked, it still ended up with a max of 1,024 electrodes. With the latest sharing from Elon, he said that there are 400 active electrodes implanted on the second patient's brain. This means that the chip has not yet achieved the maximum 1,024 electrodes, but only achieved 40% and only about 50% threads are going to be active right now on the second patient's brain. Previously, Nolan, the first person to get a Neuralink implant, shared that although some of the electrodes had previously migrated out of his brain and were now just about 15% functional, Neuralink has since then restored the chip's functionality through some software tweaks. Even with only 10 to 15% of his electrodes functioning, Nolan Arba was still able to break his previous world record for speed and accuracy in controlling a cursor with a BCI, Musk said. According to Nolan, if future patients in the trial can get to 
100% or 90% of the electrodes to work, they'll be able to accomplish tasks that he can't do now, offering great hope for our future. Thus, the initial result of 400 functioning electrodes in the second patient is extremely promising. Awesome. The disconnection of threads from the cortex would undoubtedly impact Arba's ability to connect to and control machinery. Now, to address this issue, Neuralink has implanted a step to increase the sensitivity of the brain wave recognition algorithm for the BCI's chip operation. This adjustment aims to eliminate the need for surgery to correct or reconnect the electrodes and threads that have detached from the patient's brain. Neuralink even claims that by improving the algo that translates brain waves into commands for controlling a computer cursor on the BCI chip, the user's experience, Arbaz in this case, will be significantly enhanced. The data bandwidth sent to the computer for control purposes is expected to increase compared to the initial days right after surgery. Musk describes Neuralink's next steps as gigantic, predicting that in the coming years, the company will significantly increase the number of electrodes and enhanced signal processing. The electrodes, which are a big component of the impact, collect brain cells and then route them to the electronic devices within the implant. The devices process and wirelessly transmit neural data to a version of the Neuralink app that runs on an external device, like a computer. How did the implantation for the second patient proceed? In fact, the new generation of implants has improved, but the implantation process hasn't changed much from the first patient, except for the depth of the invasion and the number of invasive threads. According to McDougall, once surgeons cut that skin on the top of the head, they flap it open, kind of like opening the hood of a car, make a one-inch round diameter in the skull, remove that bit of the skull, open the lining of the brain, and then show that part of the brain to the Neuralink robot. This is where the robot shines, he said. It can come in and take out these tiny things, much smaller than human hair, electrodes, and then precisely insert them into the cortex, into the surface of the brain, into a very precise depth, in a very precise spot that avoids all the blood vessels that are coating the surface of the brain. And after the robot's done with this part, then the human comes back in and puts the implant into that hole in the skull and then covers it up, screwing it down to the skull and sewing the skin back together. So the whole thing takes a few hours. During the procedure, surgeons make a cut in the skin on the top of the head over the area of the brain that's the most potent representation of hand intentions, according to McDougal. If you are an expert concert pianist, this part of your brain is lighting up the entire time you're playing, he said. We call it a hand knob. Even quadriplegic patients whose brains aren't connected to their finger movements anymore still imagine finger movements, and this knob part of the brain still lights up, the neurosurgeon said. Neuralink's upcoming implant plans. Despite those issues, the company says it has more than 1,000 volunteers ready for upcoming surgical trials. Musk says he hopes to reach his goal of implanting his chip into eight more patients by the end of the year, but that's still subject to regulatory approval. It's hard to believe, but Neuralink's accelerating its efforts to maximize efficiency and restore function to thousands of patients. Remember the Blindsight product that Elon talked about on X? This is also part of Neuralink's upcoming plans and could very well be used in the next eight patients. Some may have heard of Blindsight, but others might not know about it. Musk wrote on X that Blindsight is the next Neuralink product after telepathy, as the name of the implant Blindsight is an attempt to restore vision to blind patients, even those who are born blind. The company is still in the process of testing this product on animals to get the best evaluation before applying it to humans. Fair enough. In reality, restoring vision with a Neuralink chip will be more challenging than typical cases of paralysis because, as you know, the eyes are a pretty sensitive organ that's connected to the back part of the brain that allows us to see. Blind sight will primarily target the area at the back of the brain, known as the visual cortex, to stimulate the neurons to function again. The 1,024 electrodes from the blind sight chip will directly stimulate nerve cells in the retinal structure. This stimulation mimics light signals, helping the brain form images. The brain will then process the signals from the Neuralink device to create images. Now, the truth is, these images may not be as clear as normal vision, which is almost impossible, but they do help blind people recognize objects and their surroundings. Musk has shared about this that resolution is going to be low at first, kind of like early Nintendo graphics but ultimately may exceed normal human vision. If internal stimulation becomes ineffective, Neuralink could potentially transmit external images to the patient's brain. In this case, the patient might need to wear a digital camera, kind of like a GoPro. 
In this way, the camera device would wirelessly transmit data via Bluetooth to a mobile device. The phone would then convert the image data into neural signals, which are then embedded back into the Neuralink chip. The chip would subsequently send those neural signals to the brain, allowing you to see the images displayed on the phone. Of course, this scenario would be quite challenging and would require extensive research and time. It does sound a lot like virtual reality, doesn't it? Before Abba got his implant in January, he used a mouth stick to interact with the tablet screen. He stated that with the implant, he can now simply think about what he wants to happen on the computer screen, and the device makes it a reality. He mentioned the device has given him a bit more independence and reduced his reliance on caregivers. After Nolan was implanted with a Neuralink chip, his life changed, and he achieved things he thought he would never be able to do under his current circumstances. The second patient is expected to perform even better than Nolan, as the Neuralink team has gained experience and lessons to avoid errors compared to the first implantation. Elon has stated that Neuralink brain implants will be the best way for humans to integrate and compete with advanced AI systems in the future. Imagine if Stephen Hawking could communicate faster than a speed typist or an auctioneer. That's the goal. Musk posted to his social media platform X in January 2024. Musk has promoted Neuralink as a technology that could facilitate a symbiosis between humans and AI in the future. In his conversation with Friedman, Musk mentioned that the Neuralink chip might be the best way to prevent AI from surpassing humans and going rogue in a Terminator-like scenario. Mm -mm. Musk said Neuralink devices would eventually be able to repair damaged neurons to help people with problems like blindness and paralysis. It can also solve probably schizophrenia if people are having seizures of some kind, Elon said on the podcast. It could possibly solve that. It could help with the memory. He added that Neuralink's aim isn't just about giving people with neurological damage a full range of communication, but to enhance their already natural abilities. He even suggested that a person using Neuralink might eventually have vision that's higher resolution than human eyes. Musk compared vision enhancements with Neuralink to the visor worn by the character. LaForge wore a thin visor over his eyes that allowed him to see by reading the electromagnetic field and then sending inputs into his brain. Do you want to see it in a radar? No problem, Elon said. You could see ultraviolet, infrared, eagle vision, whatever you want. Musk said solving issues like neuron damage is the first baby step to getting Neuralink to a point where it could do more complex things like communicating with AI systems. However, we anticipate that Neuralink will continue to face numerous issues in the future as the number of trial patients increase. Just this year, Neuralink's been involved in two major controversies that have brought the company a lot of criticism. In June, a former employee sued Neuralink, accusing the company of having a discriminatory and hostile work environment. The employee shared that they were not provided with proper protective equipment while working with the monkeys used in Neuralink's device testing and claimed that a monkey carrying the herpes B virus scratched her through her gloves. Following this, there was the issue with the death of a large number of animals during research, which Nolan Arbaugh confirmed as a necessary sacrifice. Earlier in 2022, the Animal Rights Group Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine accused the company of torturing monkeys during trials. As ambitions for this technology grow, Musk will need to reduce the current risks associated with N1 and ensure that his brain chip is successfully used by thousands of patients. Neuralink's second successful chip implantation signifies a major leap in neurotechnology and its potential to transform medical treatment for paralysis and other neurological disorders. The improvements in the chip design and surgical procedure demonstrate the company's commitment to refining and advancing its technology. By addressing these initial challenges and demonstrating promising early results, Neuralink is paving the way for future breakthroughs that could fundamentally change how we understand and treat neurological conditions. This technology might even eventually offer enhanced cognitive abilities and more profound interactions between humans and machines, highlighting the transformative potential of brain-computer interfaces, or BCI for short. Now, we want to ask you, the YouTube viewer, what do you think about Neuralink and their latest update on the second patient participating in the trial? Please let us know your opinions and your comments down below in the comment section. With that, we hope you learned a lot more about Neuralink's second human trials after watching our episode. If you did, we humbly ask to please press that like button and join the Tesla Car World family by subscribing to our channel. And you'll never miss out on any of our awesome videos once you hit that bell icon. 
We value your feedback and the time you spent watching this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you back here soon. Until then, take care, stay safe, and God bless.